talking about the importance of not allowing our past to dictate our future. You know, some of us have gone through things that are traumatic. I shared with you the example for in my own life where I had a child with uh, severe medical needs and how that unexpected event turned me in different ways. Maybe with you, it's been something else, maybe a failed relationship, maybe something that just didn't go the way you wanted. And because of that past experience, you feel stuck and stagnant. I want to continue talking about that and give some strategy in today's episode to help you recover and help you to get back to pursuing your ambitions, your dreams, and your goals. As always, I love to interact with you. So if you want to send in a comment or react to anything that I'm saying, please send us a text on the Sunny FM line. It's 54 013 The number again is 54 013 We want you to interact with us and engage with us as much as we can. So. Um, I want to start off by reading a scripture to you. Uh, It's from the book of Isaiah. It's chapter 42 and it's verse 22. And in that scripture, it describes something that I think really speaks to where many of us are in life. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 42, verse 22, um, it refers to a certain type of people. It says that this is a people that have been robbed and plundered. Have you ever felt like you've been robbed? You know, robbed, you know, being robbed is such a traumatic experience. If you ask anybody who's been the victim of an armed robbery or a victim of theft, maybe someone snatched your phone in traffic or someone, you know, robbery is a certain type of violation. When you're robbed, it means something that was rightfully yours was taken from you. And the thing about being robbed is that it it creates this sense of dispossession and disbelief that often makes us scared to venture out again. If you ask anybody who's been the victim of armed robbery, it takes them a long time to feel comfortable in their house again. The house is theirs. Ownership didn't take hands. But the fact that someone outside of their their family violated their space, it makes them feel tired of, of being in the space that was theirs. It makes them feel scared to own the space that was theirs. Maybe you feel robbed robbed of opportunity, maybe a promotion that you thought was yours was given to someone else, you feel robbed. You feel like on the one hand, you were so sure that this was coming to you. And then just in a matter of seconds or moments, it was taken. The scripture also says people who've been plundered. You know, plunder is like an old English word for those days of conquest when people used to uh, conquer different territories. You know, maybe a pirate came into a a certain land and they, they gained victory over that land. And so they plundered the land, meaning they took what wasn't theirs, but they took it because they won, right? So some of us are in situations where maybe we've made poor choices. Maybe we didn't do what we should have done and because of that we've been plundered life has won over us and we're being plundered and we feel like we have been dispossessed of all of the good things that once made life worth living if that is you i want to speak to you today you know this scripture tells us a whole lot about how a lot of people feel in a time like this Many of our economies aren't doing as great as they used to, and we're feeling robbed, robbed of opportunity, robbed of, 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 of living in a country that can provide. And so, you know, if you watch the news, you can see that so many people are getting on boats and crossing the deserts just to leave this country that you and I call home. When people feel robbed and plundered, they start looking desperately outside of themselves for opportunity. Maybe that describes where you're at today. Maybe you feel like life has not been fair to you. Uh, Maybe someone who you cared about was taken away through death. 
and you feel robbed, robbed of, of the kind of life that you imagined for yourself. Maybe you feel like, you know, the kind of marriage that you thought you were getting is not the kind of marriage that you've got. So you feel robbed and, and plundered. You know, some people say things like, you know, when I was your age, I had this ambition. I thought I was going to do this, but look at what life did to me. I want to speak to you today from this scriptural passage in Isaiah 42, verse 22, because that scripture is talking to us who feel dissatisfied. It's for those of us who feel like we should be further along than we currently are. Some of us are sitting with this knowing inside of our spirits that we were made for more and we're living beneath our potential and we're wondering how do I draw a line between where I'm at today and these prophetic words that God has spoken over me through other people. If that's you today, I want to speak to you. You know, the scripture in Isaiah 42, 22 also talks about those who are trapped in holes. Uh, what is a hole? A hole is an unexpected detour, right? Um, you're walking on land that seems firm and then all of a sudden you're trapped in something and you sink to a certain depth that you didn't expect. I believe the scripture is referring to those of us who may have fallen into the trap of sin. You've fallen into a hole, right? You've fallen into the space where there's a certain type of sin that has become the bane of your existence. Maybe for you, it's sexual sin. Maybe you can't just stop fornicating or stop committing adultery. Maybe for you, the sin is the sin of lying. You're just a pathological liar. You can't seem to tell the truth. You have this need to make people believe that you're, you're bigger than you actually are. You have this self-seeking self spirit and you want people to think of you a little more um, honorably than you actually are. Whatever it is that has put us in a hole and has caused us to be trapped, I believe God wants to deliver us from it today through this word. You see, when we talk about empowered living, it's living in the fullness of the grace that God has given us. It's living a life without regret. It's living a life that's full of the goodness and mercy that God gifts us through his son, Christ, Jesus Christ. And many of us don't really live that life right now because we've been trapped in a hole. So whoever's been trapped in the hole of sin today, I want to join my faith with you that the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead, that won for us salvation, will rescue us from every hole that we have created for ourselves and fallen into ourselves. You know, the Bible talks about God lifting us out of the miry clay and establishing us upon a rock. So for any of us that are trapped in sin or trapped in behaviors that are imperfect and unworthy of the mark of the high calling in Christ, may God deliver us today through this word. And the last descriptor that the scripture in Isaiah 42, 22 gives us is the description of those of us that have been hidden in prison. You know, some of us know that we are made for more. We know that we are capable of so much more, but we feel hidden. I don't know about you, but there have been seasons in my life where I felt so hidden. Like, I, I feel like what David must have felt like when Samuel comes to his house and anoints him with oil and says that you're going to be king. And then he has to go back into the hidden field, taking care of sheep and nobody sees him. And he has no um, indication on the outside that he's actually meant to do anything great. So some of us fall into the category of those that have been hidden in prison. Maybe we're imprisoned in our own minds. Do you know sometimes we're trapped by this belief that we're nobody? When, when God tells us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, we, we still have this prison that we've created for ourselves, that we're, we're being accused in, 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 in our own thinking. And we think that we're not good enough. And we think that we don't have enough. Or if I just get this, 
prisons, then I will be. I believe God wants to deliver us from those prisons today. He wants us to be set free from this notion that we're not enough. Those of us who've been hidden and our gifts don't seem valued or seen or appreciated, I believe God's talking to us today. That if we want the deadness in our lives, if we want the stagnancy in our lives to be reversed, we have to come out of that hiding in prisons. So those of us who've been robbed, those of us who've been plundered, those of us who've fallen into holes, and those of us that are hidden in prisons. The scripture ends by saying something that I believe is a wisdom key for each of us to follow today. That scripture ends by saying that there's none of us who is willing to say the word restore. And I love this scripture because it teaches us the important principle that I really want to sink into your spirit this week. We have to say restoration. We have to speak restoration over everything in our lives that's been robbed, plundered, hidden in prison, or trapped in a hole. I don't know about you, but this is a word that liberated me deeply. I remember speaking this over myself in 2020, that Lord, the whole world may be shut down, but I cannot be shut down. I refuse to be hidden in a hole. I refuse to be hidden in prison. I refuse to be trapped in a hole. I refuse to be robbed and plundered of opportunity. So God taught me with this scripture to just speak restoration, that Lord, restore to me my wasted years. Restore to me every time that I have wasted. Anything that I have lost through stupidity, through unbelief, through faithlessness, through low self-esteem, I am recovering it all in Jesus' name. You see, there's something about the words that come out of our mouth. God wants them to be restorative words because he understands that we live in a fallen world. We live in a world where things aren't always perfect and you will, just by virtue of living, have an opportunity to be robbed or plundered at some point in your life. You'll have an opportunity to fall into a hole at some point in your life. And at some point in your life, you will be hidden in some sort of prison. But he says, until there is someone who is ready to say the word restore, nothing's going to happen. So throughout this whole month of March, we've been saying that, Lord, we want to call back all the dead things, all the things that we've been robbed and plundered of, all the holes that we've fallen into in all of the prisons that have hidden us. We want a restoration. And God is teaching us through this word that we cannot have that restoration until we're willing to speak it. So my friend, how are you speaking about your situation? What are you saying about the season that you're in right now? Are you saying, oh my God, nothing works. Oh my God, this nation is so cursed. Oh my God, no, 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 don't invoke God on that mess. He's saying that he's looking for people to just speak, restore. And this has been such a blessing in my life. When I look at my finances and say, you know, bank account, restore. You know, pocketbook, restore. Lord, I'm just speaking restoration. All of the lost wealth, all of the lost opportunities, all of the lost um, it, it, increase that I should have been enjoying, I am now speaking restoration in Jesus' name. You see, it's in that atmosphere when you begin speaking right that God begins to give you wisdom to know what to do. I have seen in my professional life how God has given me the grace to know what to do in seasons where I used to confess confusion. When you are someone who is called by the name of God, this title of Christian should be the proudest title that any of us wear. And it should be the proudest title because it means that we have access to a supernatural power that enables us to have victory in our lives. And many of us frustrate that power because we don't do what the word says. We don't say restore. So I wanna challenge you in the coming 
uh, days and weeks as this month of March is wrapping to an end I believe that God is stirring up the waters and he wants anybody who is ready to, to call the dead things back to life to, to have the, the, the dead opportunities dead hopes and dreams come back to life God wants us to understand and appropriate this wisdom key we really have to call restoration back sometimes I lay hands on my head and I say Lord restore my mind to perfect function help me you know I used to be sharper than this if you notice that you're being robbed of a certain mental ability or mental agility that you used to have speak restoration over that if you notice that your body is a little weaker than it used to be speak restoration Lord restore my energy Lord restore my health Lord restore my wasted time you know maybe you put your hands to something and it doesn't seem like it's yielding fruit would you just start speaking restoration over it would you just start saying you know something God you're just waiting for me to speak my own restoration you see the words of our mouth are powerful and God wants us to begin to use the tongue that he gave us for its full creative force and power the the tongue the Bible says it's such a great tool just like a ship has this tiny little thing called a rudder that leads it and directs it where it needs to go so is our tongue in the life of every believer our tongue is supposed to be directing our life in the direction that God wants it to go but unfortunately many of us have started walking by sight and not by faith so we just say the things as we see it as opposed to say it how it needs to be and that's what I think God's trying to wake us up to today that God wants us to sit in the seat of speaking restoration we need to be the people who are ready to say Lord this marriage may not look like much but I believe that you are restoring the fervor of first love you know how it is when first love is happening you know how nobody wants to hang up the phone you hang up no 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 you hang up and then you're chatting for hours and you don't know where the time has gone because you are so madly and deeply in love maybe right now you can't stand the sight of your partner maybe right now you're in a place where you can't even imagine that there is hope for your relationship can you just start doing what this word says in Isaiah 42 22 can you just start saying Lord restore I'm the person who's ready to speak the word restore see nothing gets restored until God sees us honoring the principles of his word so start speaking restoration I've seen in my own life with my own child who doctors told me should have been dead by now when I just lay hands on him and say Lord restore I've seen that the child that was told he would not live more than two weeks is now six years old glory to God because there's someone in his life who's willing to say the word restore so I just want to give you this as a wisdom key today that God wants us to be redeemed from robbery he wants us to recover everything that was plundered he wants to deliver us from every hole that we have been trapped in and he wants us to to come out of every prison that has hidden us but we can only access that recovery if we're willing to speak the word restore so I just want to join faith with you wherever you are today you know I don't know whatever's dead in your life and I don't know why God gave us this as the theme for the month of March but I believe that some of us haven't been moving forward we're stagnant because we've been robbed we've been plundered we've fallen trapped into a hole and we've been hidden in prisons whatever that means in your life I'm joining faith with you today that God will help you to speak your own restoration and recovery that from today your favorite word will be restore that when you're tempted to complain you'll just speak restore Lord restore the glory and this is a word that Jesus spoke 
to him over himself he said that glory that I had with you in heaven just restore that this is a word that God wants us to speak over ourselves restore us to that place of perfection when you made us you called us good and everything that no longer aligns with that word good in my life and yours we just want to speak the word restore over it today whatever relationships that are broken and seem lifeless may they be restored in Jesus name may the bodies that look like they're lifeless and dead maybe you've received a, a diagnosis from a doctor that says that there's no way your metabolism is coming back or your thyroid your gland is dead it's not coming back we just want to speak the word restore Lord, have mercy on your people and restore us. Restore us to perfect function. Restore us to perfect mental ability. You know, those of us who feel a little slow and we've been confessing confusion. Oh, I'm confused. Oh, oh I don't think as sharp as I used to. We repent of those words. And now the word that we are speaking is the word restore. Lord, we just want our minds restored, our bodies restored, our relationships restored. We want our nation restored. You know, those older people who tell us about Ghana in the early days after independence. They said, oh, Ghana was a place that was so neat. Ghana was a place that was this, that. And they're making us see that there is a gap between where we are today and where they were. I believe God is giving us a weapon in the word restore. So we just want to speak the word restore over our great nation, Ghana, that God will restore the glory that this, any glory that this nation may have lost, anything that may be out of order and a little dead and a little stagnant, a little slow, may God revive and restore this nation and everyone who dwells in it. We just want to speak wherever you're listening from or watching from, we pray that God will bring this word make this word come alive in you you know this entire month is about revisiting all of the things that seem dead and stagnant and out of order and asking God to bring them back to life those dead hopes those dead dreams the wishes that you've stopped even trying about this is the month to go back and say Lord I believe that it's time to restore that dream and that dead opportunity so we call back to life every contract every opportunity that seems lost we call it back and we ask that God will cause us to recover everything whatever this word means to you I just want to join faith with you that this word restore will be tangible real and alive in you in Jesus' name so sisters and brothers wherever you're listening from if you want to send a comment you know our text lines are open the line is 054-013-0684 I again 054-013-0684 let me hand over to you gifty let's see who's talking to us what are the messages coming in for such a powerful word the word for today is restoration mm. for all of us who have been robbed fallen in holes or hidden in prison remember our word is restoration so getting into our comments on facebook we have a hashtag re restoration going yes. on there. so we see you between clark renee Renee Clark, she says restoration. Vic Vicentia Bedu says restoration. Amen. Mabel Arma, restoration. Restore, says Priscilla Wellington. Um, we have Robert Roberta Ampa and mm. Mabel Arma all saying restore. Amen, amen and restore. Hi, Priscilla Wellington. Good to see you too. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for your comments and thank you for that hashtag. Keep it going. This is the Restoration Gang. We are asking that this month of March should not pass us by without us seeing the tangibility of this word. We want everything that is dead in us to come alive.
alive. You know, God wants us to be an example to the world of what success looks like. And when I started to apply these principles to my career, I began to realize that in addition to the hard work that you put in, the hours that you clock behind the computer, and all of the, the physical and practical things that you do, you want to make sure that you're establishing yourself on the right spiritual principles. You want God to be able to uh, make you mindful of any aspect of your life where you're being robbed. You know, some of us are being robbed and we don't know it. We used to be a little more prayerful than we currently are now, right? And, and the things that we are praying for, the blessings that have come into our lives have robbed us of the dependence on God. We used to give God every decision. We used to commit our ways fully to God as, as the word teaches us in Psalm 37. You know, that Psalm says, commit your way to the Lord, trust in the Lord, and he, the Lord, shall bring it to pass. But you know, many of us are kind of, you know, like, God, I got this. You sit over there. I got this. You know, it is an error to exclude God from any decision that we make as believers. And it's time for us to call back restoration. So any area of your life that needs restoration, I'm joining my faith with you today. May God restore you to the reliance on him and to that perfect walk of faith. Any more messages, Gifty? Yes, so getting into our WhatsApp messages, we have Jade who is saying thank you so much for this word. It is a word in season. Mm. Thank you so much, Jade, for your feedback. And on Facebook, we have and Adolphin de Souza saying it's very timely. Amen. Amen. And Belinda Morton is saying restoration. So we still have a few minutes. You can send in your WhatsApp messages via 054 And you can also drop a comment for us on our Facebook feed. Wow. Thank you for all the messages. I'm glad that this is a word that is hitting home. And if there's someone who needs to hear this, share the link with them to the Facebook feed uh, and, and share the, the message with them because, you know, we want to get the word out. Empowered living is really, as the name suggests, how do we help us live as people who actually have power. You know, the Bible says that you receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you. But quite honestly, there are a lot of people who are like, mm -mm, I don't want Christians in my workplace anymore. They, they seem to have this uh, self-righteousness, but we don't see the power. We don't see any difference between their lives and, and the lives of unbelievers. And that's what this show is about. We want to arm you with the biblical principles and practical strategies that'll help you actually live empowered until you begin to walk in a way that the, the the grace of God and the power of God is seen tangibly in your life you can't really be a great witness nobody wants your kind of Jesus if your kind of Jesus doesn't meet you at the point of your needs and God is not a liar he is not mocked we reap what we sow so I think God is trying to, to wake, make us alive to the fact that some of us are sowing poor seed because instead of walking by faith, we're walking by sight. And instead of declaring word, the word restore, we're declaring what we're seeing. So I'm glad that this word is reaching home today. And I'm just so encouraged by your testimonies and your messages that are coming in right now. Gifty, are there any more messages to share from our WhatsApp yes. or Facebook? So on Facebook, Godson Mensa is saying, I thank God for his healing power over my life. Um, Prisla Wellington says, it's a reviving word and a sure restoration to march on with resilience into the rest of the months with focus and precision. Mm. Bless you both. Yes. And on our Facebook, we have Queen Boressa saying, restore our fortunes, Lord, like Amen. streams in the Negev. Amen. Psalm 126 verse 4, bless you, Yahweh, I am blessed. Amen. Amen. Finally, Victorine Von D says, this message has really empowered me this morning. I feel God restoring all the lost opportunities Amen. that have been missed 
in Jesus name. May it be so in Jesus name. I love something Priscilla said. May we in encounter the coming months with focus and precision. As we wrap up today's broadcast, that is my prayer for you. I'm borrowing the words of Priscilla Wellington who commented on our feed just now. May we end the remaining months of 2024 with focus and precision in Jesus' name. May God restore you to perfect health perfect wealth and perfect success in Jesus mighty name. Thank you for joining me for another edition of Empowered Living. See you same place, same time next week for another edition of Empowered Living. May you live empowered through Christ. Welcome to our broadcast. This is Pastor Sam Owusu, Senior Pastor of Calvary Worship Centre, Vancouver, Canada. The whole world is in a time of great chaos and confusion. In an attempt to find solutions to the myriad of issues confronting our society, humanist ideas and philosophies of men are being elevated into preeminence instead of seeking wisdom and counsel from the timeless Word of God. It is our hope that today's broadcast